the speakers are here. All the speakers are here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to extend a warm welcome to principal officers, trustees, administrators, and stakeholders within the retirement funds industry. Thank you for honoring the invitation from the FSCA as we launch the most anticipated trustee toolkit. I learned that is, it is usually referred to as the TTK. My name is Mampi Julia Masike and I am the program director for the launch. You remember the FSCA introduced the trustee toolkit a while back. And I must share with you that the FSCA received positive feedback when the trustee toolkit was launched. It was first introduced and over 6,000 trustees completed the trustee toolkit. I know. Today, the FSCA, we hope to receive the same support from all stakeholders within the retirement funds industry. And we believe that the trustee toolkit will assist the trustees in executing their fiduciary duties. Today, we'll take you through the purpose of the new trustee toolkit, the benefits of the new trustee toolkit, why the FSCA embarked on this journey, the industry's view on the trustee toolkit, and of course, what I enjoy the most, the Q&A session towards the end of the launch. Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, I'd like to call upon our DC Deputy Commissioner, Astrid Luden, to take us through the purpose of the launch and to give an opening address. DC Luden, you can take the virtual stage. DC? Adele, can I get an indication if the DC is here with us? DC, are you able to hear us? Sorry, I don't think she can. Um, I've just received a message. She is, here. she is here. I don't know if DC can hear us now, but she couldn't earlier. DC, are you able to hear us? Yes, good morning. Can you see me? Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, and let me just make sure. It's just confirm, at least you can see. Uh, unfortunately, I did not hear Julia's opening remarks. So, so please excuse me if I repeat some of uh, the points she made. Um, so, from my side, what I would like to do is 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 welcome you all um, to the this launch of the new trustee toolkit. I see we have more and more people joining, um, and so that's very exciting for us. The, the trustee toolkit, as I'm sure you know, has been in the making for some time, and it's the culmination of an extensive effort to both develop, but also to test the material. And so we decided to launch this toolkit, not only to raise awareness about it and the regulatory obligations of trustees, which will be outlined to you later, but also to em emphasize the importance that we attach to governance, particularly in the area of retirement funds. The OECD and G20 countries recently launched revised principles of corporate governance. Um, and this followed a review of the principles of corporate governance, which were first issued in 1999 and which were recently, I think very recently, probably in June, endorsed by the leaders of the G20 countries. So this revision was substantive in nature. For example, it introduced a chapter on sustainability. But the point that I want to emphasize is that it shows that governance principles are not static and have to keep a pace with uh, changes in our external environment, in the economy, um, and, and in our society. So in the same way, the trustee toolkit has needed to be updated. 
And more importantly, um, it shows uh, that trustees as directors uh, of the boards of retirement funds need to be constantly alive to changes in their environment uh, to make sure that they provide the correct stewardship to the long-term savings of workers. Given that retirement funds account for about uh, 5.6 trillion in assets under management, we all recognize not only the significance uh, for the asset owners, but also the importance to the economy and society at large, and I think to South African financial markets in particular. So the turnout today, which keeps rising, and I think um, we're not able to keep up with allowing people into the lobby. I believe we had uh, 850 confirmations for the launch. And I think this shows the importance that both the industry and trustees themselves attach to governance um, and the need to continuously build their skills. So although South Africa, um, as I'm sure you all know, has a, a deep and well-developed reti uh, retirement funds industry and a robust regulatory frameworks, um, we still see challenges in our environment. And it's for this reason um, that the FECA has identified trustee education and training as one of our key areas requiring attention. We see this as part of a broader program to promote compliance by the industry. Um, and this cons will consist of enhanced guidance and education um, and is an area that we will be building out to support our supervisory function. So let me conclude today um, by saying that governance failures ultimately have a deleterious effect on member benefits. And as such, governance is the cornerstone of the preservation and growth of retirement fund asset, uh, assets. I hope that you all will benefit from this updated version of the trustee toolkit and um, will ultimately um, Uh, sorry, I hope that you will all benefit from this updated version. And I think remember, please, that it's incumbent on all of us to use opportunities for continuous development in a fast changing world so that we are able to serve um, this very important sector to the best of our abilities. So those are my uh, few opening remarks to you today. Uh, and I thank you for your attention and I thank you for attending this session. Um, we have, as I'm sure Julia has indicated to you, quite an uh, uh, extensive program for you today. So thank you. I hope you enjoy it. And Julia, let me hand back to you. Thank you so much, uh, DC Astrid Luden, for such a beautiful opening. And I take continuous development in a far changing world. I share the same sentiments as you, DC, that it is important for the FSCA, or it was important for the FSCA, of course, to update the trustee toolkit in line with the legislative changes. And I'm happy that the FSCA support um, the industry in this manner as part of its supervisory uh, mandate. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have more in store for you. We have speakers within the FSCA. We have speakers within the FSCA and we have speakers from the industry. That's why today is going to be so exciting. I'm going to call upon the Head of Department, Fund Governance and Trustee Conduct, Ms. Darina Kamradin, who will take us through why the FSCA um, embarked on this journey. And she'll also cover legislative aspects of the trustee toolkit from the beginning and um, um, which provisions of the Act uh, uh, you know, give uh, the authority or the FSCA the power to 
uh, prescribe the TTK. You might have seen in some of the on-site inspections that the FSC, the Retirement Fund Supervisory, um, uh, uh, the, the Retirement Fund's um, uh, Supervision Department that they are conducting, um, they require the trustees to have completed the trust you took it. So Zarina will look at the legal aspects of the TTK. Um, Zarina, please take the virtual stage. Thank you very much, Julia, for that wonderful introduction. And once again, welcome to all the attendees. I think people, I see people are still trickling in and it's wonderful to see, um, you know, such um, great attendance on your side as the DC indicated. We did have 850 people um, RSVP. I don't think all of them are here yet. One hopes that the tickling in will continue. Um, but but I'm very thrilled to to be here with you um, this morning for our launch. And as our DC had indicated, it has been in the making. In fact, for the number of years. Um, I'll just please let me know, um, Julia, if you are able to see. Um, I'm trying to share my screen. If you can see it, um, please let me know. I can see it, Serena. OK, great. Um, should I put my camera off at this point or should I leave it on, Julia? What, uh, would, please, would uh, the off, what is the Serena, preference? Um, for bandwidth purposes, please switch it off. Your camera must be off, please. OK, so um, as you know, today is the big day for us. It's our trusty training toolkit launch. Um, and as we had indicated to the industry, I think previously we had said the launch would take place um, in September of this year. And we are very ecstatic that we have met our deadline, notwithstanding various challenges, you know, in this journey of the trusty training toolkit. So just to give you, um, you know, a, an outline of what I'll be covering um, this morning, um, in respect of the trusty training toolkit, or as we've been calling it, the TTK, we'll provide the background. So in other words, why the FSCA embarked on this journey. As Julia indicated, I will deal with the legislative and regulatory framework. So in other words, Section 7A3 of the Pension Funds Act, Conduct Standard 4 of 2020. I will look at the timelines around when trustees ought to complete the new trustee training toolkit who is required to complete the trustee training toolkit, the benefits of the new TTK monitoring and enforcement, because of course they can't simply just be um, training provided, which is mandatory and no monitoring and enforcement. This we'll do via reports, returns and on-site visits, and I'll end with the conclusion. So just the background, um, which I think the DC has also touched on, but in order to ensure that boards of trustees exercise their fiduciary duties efficiently and effectively pursuant to Section 7C and 7D of the Pension Funds Act, and in trying to ensure good governance, education and training of trustees play a pivotal role. Hence, approximately a decade ago, the Financial Services Board, as it then was, the precursor to the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, rolled out the first online trustee training toolkit. That TTK it was great, but it was voluntary for a very long time until the issuing of Conduct Standard 4 of 2020, which came into effect on the 10th of July of 2020. But given the elementary nature of that trustee training toolkit, which although incredibly useful, it was felt that a more comprehensive trustee toolkit was needed and should be developed. And this saw the birth of the new trustee toolkit, which is being launched today. So the legislative and regulatory framework, the importance of trustee training and trustees having appropriate levels of skills are recognized and codified in section 7A3 of the Pension Funds Act, which provides that board members, trustees or elected or appointed to a fund must attain such levels of skills and training as may be prescribed by the Financial Sector Conduct um, Authority within six months from the date of their appointment. Board members are in turn required to retain the prescribed levels of skill throughout 
the term of office or of appointment. To this end, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority issued Conduct Standard 4 of 2020, which prescribed minimum skills and training requirements for board members of retirement funds. According to the conduct standard, a board member had to complete the TTK, so I'll call it the old TTK now, within six months from the effective date of the conduct standard or within six months from the date of appointment or election to the board. So in other words, the old conduct, uh, in terms of the old trustee toolkit, the trustees who, were in, who had um, been in office had to complete it by the 10th of, of January 2021. And those who had completed the trustee training toolkit previously weren't required to redo it. Um, and as I think Julia had touched upon, over 6,000, um, if not close to 7,000 trustees had completed that trustee training toolkit. And of course, that is really, um, you know, um, it shows that that we are in an industry where most trustees have shown a desire to be compliant, a desire to improve themselves, um, willingness to learn, uh, to, to, to train, to gather the necessary knowledge and skills to exercise the fiduciary duties, um, their fiduciary duties effectively. So the new trustee toolkit, which is being launched today, comprises the first 11 of 22 modules. The second half of the modules will be launched in March 2024, so March next year. Trustees are, however, expected to complete the first 11 modules, which is being launched today, within six months from today. All 22 modules will have to be completed within six months of the rollout of the second tranche of the next 11 modules or within six months of the date of appointment or election to the board. So that is, deals with the timelines. Dealing with who is required to complete the trustee training toolkit. So it is mandatory for all trustees to complete the new trustee training toolkit it replaces the old trustee toolkit. And just please be cognizant that just because you've completed the old trustee training toolkit doesn't mean that you don't have to complete this uh, particular trustee training toolkit. As I said, it's as it has been said, it is more comprehensive. It is uh, an update which you are all as trustees required to complete. So what are the benefits of the trustee training toolkit? So consistent with international best practice and legislation in other jurisdictions, the fit and proper requirements for board members in the form of skills and competence are provided for in the Pension Funds Act. Accordingly, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, through the trustee training toolkit, aims to facilitate the training of trustees to get up to speed quickly to acquire the necessary knowledge and skills to exercise their fiduciary duties um, promptly and to assist trustees to retain the required levels of competence in a rapidly changing environment. As you know, so much has happened, um, you know, for those of us who have been in the industry, even in the last 10 years, you know, we went from, for example, we went from annuitization to default regulations, um, you know, and, and as you know, the two-part system is imminent. So there's um, there's been a lot of dynamism um, in, in this area and it's continuing. So the need for trustees to continually update updating their knowledge and, and skill levels and training um, is, of course, imperative to function effectively in, in this dynamic environment. Um, the FECA has made a careful selection of the relevant modules tailored to facilitate the training process through e-learning. So we've embarked on quite a, a, a long journey. We There was the development of the body of knowledge um, in respect of the trustee training toolkit, there were review processes, um, you know, by um, by various um, parts of the FSCA. We had an independent panel um, who reviewed um, the trustee training toolkit. 
we've had um, testing, et cetera, as, as was indicated. So it's been an incredibly long journey, and we've also um, utilized the services of a service provider to basically tailor this so that it is in an e-learning format that hopefully you find um, enjoyable and that will be quite easy for you to navigate. The formative and summative assessments at the end of each module will help you as board members and of course, uh, um, you know, principal officers will also complete the trustee uh, toolkit to assess your progress. The trustee tail toolkit places a strong emphasis on fund governance for good reason, which is designed to equip the board of trustees to discharge um, and your duties adequately. While Section 71E of the Pension Funds Act allows board members to seek expert advice where they lack sufficient knowledge and delegate their functions, board members are ultimately accountable for good governance of the fund and all functions for that matter under the Act, the Pension Funds Act, in terms of Section 7D2 of the Pension Funds Act. As you know, Trustees are not, uh, even though they may delegate in writing um, any of their functions, you are still, you are not relieved or divested of the delegated function. And that's why it is so critical that, that you are empowered to actually take informed and make informed decisions in funds, because as we all know, you stand in a position of trust. Um, in respect of other people's monies, um, you stand in that position of trust to ensure that the members' benefits as outlined in the rules are actually delivered to members. After the completing the trustee toolkit, trustees ought to be in a better position to assess and evaluate the quality of advice received as opposed to slavishly adhering to advice received. We see this in various contexts. Service providers are utilized and, uh, you know, it's almost as if there's some sort of hands-off approach because the service provider has done this. That's, of course, not correct. You must be able to check every aspect, whether it is investments, whether it's your administration, are benefits delivered the way it ought to be delivered? Um, you know, your death benefit distributions, what type of, um, you know, controls do you have in that respect? Um, are you applying your minds to all sorts of things, the payment of contributions, etc.? So to this end, the trustee training toolkit includes modules such as, well, firstly, the introduction to pension funds, but governance, importantly, contributions, because we know that, you know, we've had several webinars, um, you know, and educational programs on this, uh, but it re remains an issue. We've done the naming and shaming, as you may know recently, but ADEA contributions remains a, 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 a bugbear in this industry. Investments is also uh, uh, dealt with in, in, in one of the modules, and that's quite critical as well because we know that not all trustees have, um, you know, that type of knowledge. Many of us, that's not our forte, but it is, of course, important to have at least a basic knowledge so that you do the right thing. So I think it was also touched on by the by the DC. But for example, ESG, are ESG factors being considered as it ought to be in terms of Regulation 28 when investment decisions are made, etc. Then types of benefits, um, that's another module, minimum benefits, protection of benefits, rules, death benefits, the effect of divorce and maintenance orders, surplus, and so on. Monitoring and enforcements. So, as we know, this is a mandatory trustee training toolkit. So it's not as if we're just going to leave everyone um, and and you know to their own devices. We will be monitoring uh, where the trustees have completed the TTK. So we're quite fortunate that the reports are generated by the TTK platform and it will allow the Financial Sector Conduct Authority to monitor the trustee's completion of the TTK. The governance return incorporated in the Omni CBR, Conduct of Business Return, will also be used as a tool to monitor compliance. 
The financial sector conduct authority will also utilize on-site inspections to monitor compliance with the completion of the trustee toolkit. The FECA will take regulatory action where there is a lack of compliance. In terms of Section 26.2 of the Pension Funds Act, compliance with Section 7A and by necessary implication, the trustee toolkit is the responsibility of the entire board, failing which the FSEA may take appropriate, as I said, regulatory action. Further, 67 of the Financial Sector Regulation Act, the FSEA may impose an administrative penalty for failure to complete the TTK. But of course, we are hopeful, and if the attendance is anything to go by, it is a good sign, and the previous completion of the old trustee toolkit that you will, you know, that trustees will get get on with it and complete the trustee training toolkit, and that there will be no need for, um, you know, for us to take um, regulatory action to enforce it. We hope that there is a high level of cooperation, as there has been previously within um, with uh, completing the trustee training toolkit. Um, Moving now to, um, so I would just say in conclusion, um, I would implore you to embrace the new trustee training toolkit. I know some people have a reticence or reluctance when something new is introduced and they see it as punishment. This is really not punishment. This is meant to assist you in the execution of your functions as trustees. So please complete it. It is mandatory, of course, but it's also great fun. And I know this because we've done, um, you know, lots of testing on this, um, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, please go ahead, enjoy, embrace it, have fun. Um, what I'd also say is that if for whatever reason, and please, these are the outliers, but if you cannot complete the trustee training toolkit as trustees within the time period prescribed, then please apply for an extension. But please, we don't want extensions coming in before, uh, you know, um, long before the time because you want to take an inordinately long time to complete the TTK. It is for your benefit. It's for the importantly for the benefit of members. Ultimately, we hope so. So please get get on with it. And then lastly, what I'd like to do is to just thank all the colleagues um, who contributed to the Trusty Training Toolkit and who provided invaluable support on this journey. I would like to thank Stefani Rousseau, even though I don't think she's here today, but from the Supervisory Framework Department, who walked this very long journey with us and her head of department, Lorraine van Dierfinter, um, for all the um, valuable assistance in, in the project. Of course, to our division, the Retirement Fund Supervision Division, uh, my colleagues, um, Cordelia Beitenbach, um, Vilma Mukopo, uh, Fikile Mosoma, uh, the managers, um, you know, the managers, everyone who contributed to the body of knowledge, the reviewing the material. Thank you ever so much. Um, not, not to, and, and Julia, um, Julia Tognon, uh, the actuarial services um, department, as some of you may know, has now joined our division, and they've also provided incredible support on in respect of the actuarial modules. Um, so a big thank you to Julia, to, to Marguerite, to Daniel, and, and the actuarial team for their a support um, to the communications team who has also, you know, been with us every step of the way. A big thank you to Renilwe, Festus, Ibusiso, Tabang, um, and Timbisa, their head. Um, a very big thank you to ICT, who without them, this would also clearly not be possible. It is an online platform. So thank you very much to Yaku, to Yaku, to Edward, to Ayanda. Please, if I'm forgetting anyone, my apologies. Um, to cons um, consumer education, Alicia and Carieta, to my team, uh, Tando, Sancha, Dudu, 
who reviewed the material every step of the way and for working tireless, tirelessly to make this happen and for everyone who worked tirelessly on this and making it happen. And a special thank you to the independent review panel, Radesh Maharaj and Purvis Hanako. And last but uh, not least, very importantly, a big thank you to our project manager who actually had to take over as project manager, um, I think halfway through the project as the previous project manager had moved, moved on. A big thank you to Adal Seforo, who was our project manager and who kept us on the straight and narrow and made um, this launch possible. And um, yeah, it was a, a great pleasure to work um, with all of you, even though I know we've had challenges at times. Also to the industry who assisted us with the testing, I'd like to, to extend our, our gratitude. Um, that was very useful, very helpful, and, and the various inputs that, that were made. We've taken it, um, you know, to heart where we could um, effect the necessary changes we have. Um, so, yes, this has been a, a quite a long road, even though when you look at the TTK, it might not seem that way, but it's been quite a journey. But on that note, I'd like to conclude and just say, please enjoy, have fun, um, and, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Zarina. Um, obviously, I can see that there are so many people behind the scenes. I'd like to congratulate you and your team and obviously everybody who was involved in the work that you have done. I guess today is just a testimony of the, you know, it's just the fruits. You see the fruits of what you guys have 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 been cooking. Um, I just want to take from your um, your presentation that um, you know, it's a legislative requirement to complete the trustee toolkit or the TTK, and therefore it's mandatory. Um, you know, I was, as you were presenting that, and I was hoping to see what would be the actions taken by the authority if, um, you know, trustees don't complete the trustee toolkit, and you've said non-compliance may result in regulatory action. Um, thank you so much for such a wonderful detailed uh, presentation. And I also would like um, to, to say this, um, it was interesting to hear you say that you are encouraging the principal officers to consider completing the trustee toolkit to assist their board of management in the management of their funds. So that was quite powerful. Although it's not a requirement for principal officers, but that encouragement meant a lot. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as um, Zarina indicated, the trustees must complete the trustees to the trustee toolkit or TTK within six months from um from today. <laughs> yeah, um, I can imagine the queries that we're going to have. Um, if I was a trustee myself, you know, I'd like to know who to contact. Um who is the contact person at the FSCA? Um, well, if you are asking yourself that question, that is why we've decided to have this launch today. And the next speaker um, will share more details on who the contact person is at the FSCA. Um, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to call um, Sanshia Pitri. Um, she's a senior analyst from retirement um, funds governments, governance and trustee conduct at the FSCA. Sancha Pitri. Thank you so much for that introduction, Julia. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Sancha Pitri, and I will be taking you through the complaints, inquiries, and hopefully compliments process on the new TTK platform. Um, let me just share my screen with you. Let me know when you can see my slides. Julia, can you see my slides? Yes, I'm sure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. As I've indicated, I will be taking you through the complaints, inquiries, and compliments process. This is a completely new platform, so things are a bit different. 
um, at the bottom of the page, I've just taken, given you a screenshot of where you can find this. Trustee can use the link under inquiries at the bottom of the TTK portal landing page to log complaints, inquiries and compliments. Alternatively, trustees can contact the FSCA telephonically. We've also put our number right next to the link. Um, once you click on the link, trustees will be redirected to the complaints, inquiries and compliments page on the FSCA website. Now, this is the new TTK portal link, and I will be taking you through it. So I'm just going to yes, close my um, presentation and show you exactly what the platform looks like. Julia, can you see my slide? Can you see my um, the website? Yes, I can. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you very much. This is the new e-learning platform at the FSCA. Right now, we're referring to it as the TTK platform, but going forward, all e-learning from the FSCA will be hosted on this platform, especially your consumer education type of e-learning. But for now, it's the, e it's, it's the TTK that will be on there. As I've indicated at the bottom, right at the bottom, there's the inquiries tab. And for general inquiries, you will click here. It's a link and it'll take you to the FSCA website where you can log your inquiry. Alternatively, here's the number that you can call. Before you um, go through this process, I would like to implore trustees to first look at the frequently asked questions. This might be able to assist you with general queries that you have. Um, we have quite a list of them. You can just check um, there's a drop down arrow you can check what the answers are to these questions if these are the type of questions that you have um, we have a very comprehensive user guide which i implore you to look at you can find it here at the top you click on the user guide and this will come up it's a pdf you can download it if you would like i just want to go through it on the pdf so that it's just a bit bigger for you to see so this is the how to guide and it'll show you how you can. This is the e-learning platform um, website that you can use. It has um, screenshots as well. So it's it should be very easy for you to, you know, um, it should be able to assist you with general queries that you have. Um, this is how it this is the latest announcements that we will have. Um, this is how you register. Remember, you will have to register twice because, as I've said, this is an e-learning platform for all FSCA e-learning. So this will be the first registration just for the platform. Then after this, you will have a second registration based on the e-learning that you would like to register for, be it the TTK or any of the other consumer education um, platforms. It shows you screenshots and where you should register. This is the register. You need to register before you log in. Um, it shows you exactly what the platform looks like. As I said, there'll be a second registration. You will click there and you will register again for the platform that you need to register for. Um, it'll take quite a bit of your information. And I just want to get here. There's a surprise video here for you that we hope you enjoy. Um, and once that's done, you will click on the My Learning tab, and that is where you will find all the first 11 modules right here on the left. Once you click on it, a video will pop up here on the right. Let me just show you what that looks like. And you will click on the play button and your e-learning journey will start. Now, I know um, there's a suggestion that you should put your um, web browser on 100% by that, that would be here. But from my laptop, it works better on 80%. So just do what is comfortable for you. Let me just go back to the guide. And when you Sorry, are Sunshine, done. The video is playing. Yes, Adele? I was saying the video is playing. Playing where? Adele? Please continue. Adele? Oh, all right. Thanks. 
um, once you're done with your e-learning, it'll ask you, are you ready to take the assessment? You say yes. There's a button right there is a button right there at the top that you click on. Take formal summative assessment and you will take an assessment after every module. This is more or less what the assessment looks like. It'll ask you to choose the correct option. Please read carefully here because sometimes it asks you to choose the incorrect option and you will pick one and you will submit your assessment. It will tell you what your score is at the end, tell you that you've passed and completed the module. Then it'll take you back here and you will click on the second module, which is good governance, and you will continue until you've finished all 11. It'll also show you your progress. As you see here, it's 100%. It'll show you if you're at 20, 50, 70. It'll tell you how far you are with the e-learning. Once you are done with all 11 um, summative assessments, you can download your certificate and you will download it over here. Your password will be your ID number or you can send it to yourself as an email as well. This will be what the certificate of completion more or less looks like. And this you will receive once you've completed all 11 modules. If you choose the send an email option, this is how this is the email that you will receive with your certificate. As I've indicated, your password will be your ID number. And that is the how to guide. If that doesn't assist you and the frequently asked questions cannot assist you, then I please click here. It indicates click here and this will take you to the FSCA website. The complaints, inquiries and compliments process starts here. Now, if it's a new complaint, you click on new. When you go down, it'll say please select the, applica the applicable option. You click on inquiry, request information or feedback from FECA. That is where you log an inquiry with us. If it's a compliment, it's the one right above. Please don't be shy. We would really appreciate it as we will put those in our testimonials on our platform. So are you submitting on behalf of? If you're a trustee, you submit on behalf of yourself. I know often um, POs submit on behalf of trustees, then you will click the second option and I will also show you what that looks like. So once you say self, you are the trustee, you click on your preferred method of communication. Hopefully that is email. <laughs> and then the department here will be the retirement funds department. So that's over there. After this, you will fill in Complete your details, and as you can see, the mandatory fields are indicated. So your title, name, surname, and email address. ID number is not a mandatory field. This is normally for your unclaimed benefits where they need this. So you do not have to complete it for this type of inquiry. You can put yourself a number if you want to, but you do not have to. As you can see, it's not a mandatory field. At the bottom, you will give details of your complaint. This is on compliment. Apologies. I've clicked on compliment. <laughs> on the inquiry side, um, it's the same with the mandatory fields. At the bottom, it'll ask you to, um, to give the details of the information required. You will tell us what your issue is, and then you will give us the reason for, the, for what you require. You have to complete the TTK, it's mandatory. And then at the bottom, you, we have a disclaimer, you agree to the disclaimer, and then to make sure that you are not a robot, you just have to add 26 plus 10, 36, and then you validate your input. And that's how you log a query. Now, if you've already logged a query and you would like to follow up on that query, then you click on the follow up tab. You will have a reference number that you can put in. And if you have additional comments, you can put this in here as well. Now, I have indicated that if you are submitting, if it's the peer submitting on behalf of the trustee, you choose another individual. 
And then the first one will be the details of the PO who is submitting this inquiry. You will put in your details, the mandatory fields. Um, these are not, as I've indicated. And then this will be the, the details of the trustee, the other individual. You will complete this as well. And then you will validate your input at the bottom. And that is the complaints, compliments and feedback or inquiry process on, um, on the FSCA website. Now back to my presentation. I just want to show you at the end. So once you log an inquiry on the FSCA website, um, it'll go to the licensing and business center. If you call in, you will speak to the call center and they are our first line of support. They will help you with navigating the TTK portal, how to register, change passwords, download certificates. Um, if they cannot assist, they will direct content issues to the retirement funds team, or they will direct technical issues to the ICT service desk. Um, so we have, um, we, we, do believe that we will receive quite a huge number of queries within the first month. So in order to preempt this, we have given you frequently asked questions, how to guide, but we've also trained the licensing and business center as well as the call center on how to, on how to assist you with general queries. Once a com a, an inquiry or complaint has been referred to the um, retirement funds team, this is the fund governance and trustee conduct department, we will assist you with content issues. So questions or issues with the e-learning content specifically or the final assessment if you have issues with that. If it's a technical issue, it will go to the ICT service desk and they will, and, um, they will assist you with issues that you have with the platform. And that is it from my side. Oh, just another very important thing. Apologies that I did not touch on on the e-learning um, platform. Once you log in, you will register first over here just for the platform and then you will log in over here. And this is where it'll take you. You will have to then register for the course that you want to register for. You will be registering for the trustee training toolkit and you will click here to register. It'll ask you, as you can see, there are demographic information that we ask for. This is to monitor transformation. You'll see there's gender, there's race, and yeah, so the, these are the type of information that we will be requesting from, for you for the TTK specifically. You will also have to give us your the sector that you're in and the fund. You can find all the um, trust the um, retirement funds over here. So you click the one that's applicable, or you can click more than one if you are a trustee on more than one of these funds. And yes, then when you are done with the second registration, you submit the information. And that is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much, Sanjia. Thank you so much, Sanjia. Can I just ask before you leave, um, did you want to share a video? No, the video is a surprise. Once you register, you will see the introductory <laughs> video. And I hope everyone <laughs> appreciates it. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Thank you so much. Um, I can't wait for that surprise um, video. And I guess I'm not the only person. Um, trustees that are here also cannot wait to see the surprise video. Thank you so much, um, Sanshia, for that. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, we we believe, as I mentioned earlier on, in um, collaborative effort um, for the success of the retirement funds industry. And as promised, we have external speakers who share um, their views on phase one of the TTK. Um, the first speaker is Mr. Radesh Maharaj. Um, he's the chairperson of Batseta Council of Retirement Funds for South Africa. He's a professional um, principal executive officer. He is 
a practicing attorney. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mar Maharaj um, served in several roles in the retirement funds industry over almost two decades. He's a committee member for the South African um, Pension Funds Investment Forum. He served in senior capacities at the Office of the Pension Funds Adjudicator and the Retirement Funds Section of the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, uh, respective, respectively, um, for over 15 years. Mr. Maharaj has extensive experience in the financial services sector, and he moved to the private sector in 2019 and currently serves as an independent trustee and principal officer of retirement funds and as non-executive director of licensed financial services providers. His passion is pensions law and um, he's a strong uh, uh, um, he, he um so he is he's got um uh, he is a strong uh, proponent of the ethical governance um, of our financial services sector in South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce Mr. Radesh Maharaj. Thank you so much, uh, Julia. Uh, you know, uh, with that sort of uh, introduction, it's just uh, downhill from there for me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I see we're running a bit behind time, so I I'm going to get started. Uh, firstly, uh, I think on behalf of all uh, attendees today, uh, we extend a huge uh, congratulations to uh, the FSCA and especially uh, Zarina Kamruddin, and the team for the mammoth work they, they've done to make this new trustee toolkit a reality. It's really a mess, but Sita, uh, we saw the unwavering dedication and commitment of uh, Zarina and the team in ensuring that this toolkit project was properly completed and sees the light of day. So uh, kudos to all of you and uh, for the sterling work that you've done. And I'm sure the thousands of trustees and principal officers who will work through the new toolkit in time will also give you uh, their stamp of approval. So well done. Now, as human beings, we are all on our journeys of enlightenment throughout our lives and learning about our world and about ourselves. During our lifetimes, this is an integral part of this journey. More so as South Africans, education is a core part of our transformation journey. Coming from a history where education and access to it was denied to the majority of us for so long, uh, we can well and truly say the do doors of learning are now open. Uh, and the trustee toolkit plays an important role in that in our retirement funds context. Uh, let, let me pause here and preface this learning journey by saying that it is not necessary for all of us to know everything, even as a, a, a professional PO or trustee. However, it is important to understand how to make decisions. This is a difficult thing but how to make decisions. And also to understand in this decision-making context that it is important to use fund experts, et cetera, especially as we are the custodians to literally multi-billion rand funds, and we have to manage them in an increasingly complex business environment, and that's putting it uh, mildly. Just as an example, uh, I've attended literally thousands of trustee board meetings in my time, but I can safely say when I first saw the abbreviation ZCC in an investment committee meeting pack, I thought it had something to do with a large church of ours. 
only to later learn that our investment consultants were actually referring to buying a zero cost collar as part of an option strategy to limit uh, potential downside. So all of us are always learning. Now, coming back to trustees knowing how to make decisions, I've also come across another dangerous culture in South African boardrooms, and that is a culture of the overbearing trustee or chairperson or clique of trustees who believe they are the font of all knowledge, their view is the right view, and they trivialize or frankly just ignore the views of some of their fellow trustees. Again, this type of oppressive culture has no place in the modern South African boardroom, whether it be retirement funds or any similar context. And I implore all trustees to guard against this behavior uh, if and when they see it. Let all trustees' voices be heard and their concerns adequately addressed. Now, professional training and acquiring education, such as completing the new trustee toolkit, assists in ensuring that this type of oppressive corporate cultures are eventually eradicated from our boardrooms. I want to move on now and uh, say that with regards to Batseta, it is a not-for-profit professional body for principal officers, uh, deputy principal officers, trustees, and fund officers, officers generally. Uh, we care about people and people's development. And as you are aware, we are the examining body for two occupational qualifications, one for trustees and one for principal officers. Our members who hold a professional designation must complete a prescribed number of training hours every year. And we regard the trustee toolkit as a very important building block within the overall skills development framework for all retirement fund officers. As an organization, BATSITA supports the notion of lifelong learning, which refers to the voluntary pursuit of knowledge, skills, and personal growth throughout a person's life. This is how we develop the professional fund officer, keep up with the latest industry trends, and adjust to a rapidly changing world. A Harvard University study revealed that our capacity for learning is becoming the currency we trade on in our careers. Where we once went to work to learn to do a job, learning now is the job. The ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn is vital for anyone's long-term success. This holds true also for trustees and other fund fiduciaries. We are expected to make meaningful contributions the moment we report for our first board meeting. The, this expectation increases uh, exponentially after that. You will all agree with me that every time we enter the boardroom, there is a raft of important issues for discussion, not least uh, administration matters, investment matters, a uh, new draft conduct standard or uh, conduct standard itself, FSCA, FSCA communications, and much more that we all have to absorb during these meetings. In this process, we also have to unlearn old rules and relearn new ones. Now, this skills development framework for all fund officers is all about five overarching concepts. Firstly, good governance and trust. Secondly, member rights, then transformation, then collaboration, and lastly, opportunity. Uh, just going into more detail, firstly, with regards to good governance and trust, uh, Deputy Commissioner Luden also alluded to this thing. Uh, if we for a moment ignore the fact that the toolkit is prescribed, you will find that the underlying principles that brought us together today speak directly to issues of good governance and trust, which are the foundations of any sound retirement funding system. 
It is essential that retirement funds are well governed, transparent in operation and sustainable to secure the financial futures of all their members. It is us trustees and POs who are responsible for this and their guardians. Trustees who receive adequate training are better equipped to fulfill their trust, uh, their fiduciary duties and by so doing gain the trust of their members and the general public as well. Secondly, it's about members rights. The member savings in our retirement funds that we all manage is often the largest capital sum that they will ever accumulate. Now, members therefore have the right to expect that their savings are managed prudently in their best interests and within the parameters of the law. This from National Treasury's uh, 2012 uh, retirement reform paper. Thirdly, it's about transformation. Skills development plays a vital role in supporting the transformational agenda of retirement funds in South Africa by increasing diversity and representativity within our sector. It opens up new opportunities for women and other groups traditionally underrepresented in our sector, since training and development programs are now tailor-made uh, to the unique requirements of our industry. I pause here to say that training and development also plays an important part in ensuring we, are, we as previously disadvantaged and marginalized persons in boards of retirement funds contribute meaningfully to decision making. And to those who expect us to stay quiet or accept their diktats, this is fundamentally how we counter such behaviors. Lastly, it is about collaboration and opportunity. Through collaboration, we are able to share knowledge and learn from each other's experiences, to take on new challenges, to tackle complex issues, and to build relationships and foster a sense of community. The trustee toolkit plays an important part in making these uh, skills development outcomes a reality. I want to take this opportunity to encourage all trustees, principal officers and fund officers generally to complete the new toolkit, even if you have done so before. It is an opportunity to refresh your skills and competencies, and it is recognized for CPD purposes. But most of all, it presents the ideal opportunity for all of us to learn something new. Uh, Again, congratulations to the FSCA on reaching this important milestone. You can rest assured that all of us as fund officers and as Batsita as well, you have our full support in this important endeavor. Thank you, Julia, and thank you, FSCA team. Thank you. Thank you so much, Radesh. Uh, thank you for such uh, beautiful words. I mean, it's 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 not about us. It's about a trust. It's about the members. I think you've summarized that very well. And we we are happy that we do have um, the support of the industry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move to our next speaker. I just want to confirm with um, Adele, um, who the, our next speaker is, because I don't seem to have the correct, uh, uh, you know, program at hand. Um, is it Wayne um, or is it Geraldine? It is both of them, Wayne and Geraldine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Um, can you also confirm if they're here? Yes, both are here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Adele. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, our next speaker is um, Wayne, um, Wayne Hila van Rensburg. Wayne is an executive um, officer of um, 
the institution, the Institute of Retirement uh, Funds Africa. Uh, in addition to his executive role, uh, he serves as principal officer of some of the South Africans' um, largest retirement funds. He's a member of the Pension Lawyers Association, the International Pension and Employee Benefits Lawyers Association, and Financial Planning Institute, and of course, Batseta. Wayne, you may take the virtual stage. Thank you, Julia. We have, we, we, we're doing a, a, a joint session between myself okay. and, and Geraldine. So I'm going to switch off my camera and share the, the slides. I okay. think that's going to be best. Thank you. Thank While you. you're still sharing your slides, I can introduce uh, Geraldine. Um, Geraldine is, um, uh, if if Irfa president um, and uh, executive board member, um, she's also the founding director and CEO of um, GQM fund administrators. She has over 28 years experience in the retirement funds industry um, and specifically in areas of administration, consulting and trusteeship. Um, she has held senior positions with private uh, fund administration and consulting houses. Welcome, Geraldine. Super, thanks very much, Julia, and uh, welcome to everyone. Good day, and uh, certainly is an exciting day for us. Uh, I'm going to switch my camera off also, and uh, as Julia said, uh, we'll be doing a joint presentation between myself and Wayne. Um, I am the president for the Institute of Retirement Funds Africa. And we are delighted to be here today to extend our full support to the Financial Sector Conduct Authority on this occasion of the launch of phase one of the revised trustee toolkit. And with me, we've got Wayne Hiller van Rensburg, who is the IRFA's executive officer. Thank Radish you. Radish and um, uh, spoke about supporting South, South African trustees. The IRFA stands firmly behind all efforts to provide trustees of South African retirement funds with tools that enhance their abilities to make better decisions, improve governance, and enhance operational practices. Wayne, I think we had a presentation. Are you going to share the presentation? Uh, shucks, I thought I was sharing it. I see I'm not. <laughs> there we go. Can you see it now? Not, not yet. yet. Not Let's yet. Let's try again. There we go. Hopefully everyone can see it now. Yes, thank you. Yes. Great stuff. Thank Thanks you. very much, Wayne. So, so as Radesh said, you know, um, the role of the trustee very much uh, evolves around or results around that of good governance. Um, and really with uh, tools such as the trustee toolkit, uh, it enables trustees to enhance their abilities to make better decisions. Wayne? Trustees play a critical role in safeguarding the financial well-being of retirement fund members. Empowering them with the right knowledge and skills is essential for the betterment of our society and for, for the members. And training to trustees or, or ongoing training, as Radesh said, is a, it's a lifelong journey. And training is paramount in ensuring that the trustees are well equipped to navigate the complex landscape of retirement funds. It's like giving them a map to navigate through uncharted waters. We know um, it is a complex landscape. Zarina spoke about all the, the changes that have taken place in the last decade. And it's not always easy for trustees to understand and therefore uh, ongoing training such as the DTK is imperative for trustees. Absolutely, Geraldine. I, I just imagine trying to drive without knowing the rules of the road. 
trustees need to understand. Firstly, trustees need to understand the language um, and with that language, they can then comprehend what it is that they're being asked to do and then make the informed decisions. Without training, you you entering this world blindly or, or, or the sphere blindly. So th thanks, Wayne. And uh, therefore, the trustee toolkit is like a compass guiding the trustees on their journey towards better governance and decision making. And as we saw, the toolkit is, is going to be 22 modules, 11 and then a further 11. And that it is important to follow the entire process because that is part of the, the guiding and compass process. And it's a absolutely valuable resource for the trustees to uh, partake in this trustee toolkit training program. Absolutely, Geraldine. You know, and I, I think, you know, it, 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 we, we spoke about it and we touched on it and Zarina touched on it a little earlier. You know, the, the, the deadline for completing the, the trustee toolkit, you know, is, a, is, is something that's looming and something that we as a collective need to provide support for as many people as needs the support to be able to complete it. But also it is an opportunity to review your, your current skill set and your, your, your ability to make these decisions based on the, the questions and, and activities that you require to do as a trustee. Yeah, and, and just to re-emphasize uh, what the team discussed earlier on, um, we know as with the previous trustee toolkit or trustees at six months in which to complete it, the same is going to apply as the team indicated. Uh, there will be a six month deadline uh, from the date of this launch for all existing trustees to complete the revised toolkit and then it will always be also be six months uh, if there's a new trustee that gets appointed to the board, uh, if that trustee had not yet completed the trustee toolkit, they will then have six months from the date of their appointment to uh, complete the revised trustee toolkit um, modules. Absolutely, Geraldine. You know, and I, I think you know, Radesh brought a lot of the the issues that we we also hold close to our hearts. Um, as an organization. Uh, I'm going to to move on now and, and maybe we can touch a little bit on the 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 IRF just just for those who, who are not familiar with with our organization. Thanks, Wayne. So um, I'm sure most people hopefully are aware of the IRFA, the Institute of Retirement Funds Africa, and we advocate for the retirement sector. Um, we are here to support you, the retirement sector in South Africa and across the African continent. You know, RFA serves as a strong voice for the retirement sector. We actively engage with government authorities and regulators to shape policy and ensure that favorable that there's a favorable environment for our members, those would be funds, service providers, and ultimately the members of the funds, and for the sector as a whole. These engagements are imperative and the FSCA and various other forums or, or, or state-linked organizations have really listened and, and been welcoming for, for our engagements, as with the trustee toolkit and the support provided by by um, the various stakeholders in the, the sector. And something that um, Radesh spoke about earlier on also collaboration. You know, at the IRFA, collaboration is the heart of what we do. And we have always, and, and many people would have heard me say that, I like use, using the saying, no one is as clever as all of us. And, and that is really what it is about. Um, we strongly believe that together we can drive positive change and the needed innovation uh, in the retirement sector. Um, together we, we can, and through collaboration and getting uh, collective insights, 
from all stakeholders in the industry, um, we can achieve that positive change that we are striving for as an industry. Thanks, thanks, Geraldine. And I think one of the other things we 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 will want to touch on, and and it, it's part of who we are and who we're developing into, is our is our dedication to the sustainable development goals. And you know, this underpins a lot of activities that that we as a as a industry do, and that trustees need to think about as you know they think about the outcomes they're working towards for 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 their for their members. Yeah, sustainable development goals like no poverty, quality education, gender equality, uh, reduced inequalities. That all touches on what Radish spoke about just now by practicing these and bringing it into our sustainable development goals. Um, we do our part towards transformation, which as Radesh rightly pointed out, is such an imperative part of our industry. Um, and these type of goals as listed there resonate so deeply with the work that we do um, in our retirement fund sector. You know, by aligning our activities with these SDGs, the RFA is, is maximizing its impact and actively contributes to creating a sustainable and inclusive retirement sector and society. Um, one of our, our primary goals and the reason we, we support this initiative with, with such enthusiasm. Thanks, Wayne. And then uh, in conclusion, we firmly stand united with the FACA and all trustees, old and new, in this endeavor. And we strongly believe we can build a retirement sector that offers security, equality, and prosperity to all South Africans and all people across the African continent. Thank you, Geraldine, and thank you for everybody in the in the, this webinars for their dedication. Um, and, and, you know, something we need to remember is that the journey towards better governance and a brighter future starts partially with the with, with the revised toolkit. Um, and yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. Th thanks, Wayne. And um, I'd like to just close off by saying, and as our new IRFA byline says, and because we want to support efforts to help trustees complete the trustee training toolkit, also by the deadline, we say this can be achieved because we are better together. Thanks very much and thanks for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Julia. That's Thank us. you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute, Wayne. Thank you so much, um, um, Wayne. Thank you so much, um, uh, Geraldine, for such a beautiful and insightful, you know, um, presentation on your what your views are. And I mean, you also echoed the same sentiments as Radesh um, in support of the TT um, K, and um, that you will, you know, also spread the word and encourage other trustees to participate um, and that support is really really welcomed from um, our side um ladies and gentlemen we have our last speaker for the day um just before the exciting part of um the the launch Adel, can you confirm that you are able to see me? For some reason, people have been saying they can't see me. I can, I can see, you. see you. We can see you, Julia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Adel, can you also confirm if our next speaker is here? Yes, Mr. Matlangus here. Okay. Um, just to also wrap up from um, the discussion that 
um, or the presentation from um, Geraldine and Wayne um, that um, the trustees should view it as an opportunity to review their current um, skill set. And I think that was very powerful. Um, you know, don't see it as an attack, but see it as um, a, a tool to assist you in, in executing your fiduciary duties diligently as required in terms of legislation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Mr. John Masangu. Um, he is a retirement funds coordinator and acting policy head of COSATU. Um, he's responsible for coordinating the work of the Federation's policies and monitoring compliance with the Pension Funds Act. Um, he has um, you know, extensive experience and he contributed to uh, many policy engagements which led to what we now are aware of the draft of the two port retirement fund system um, amendments to the pension fund second amendment act to name but a few um, he was also part of the annuitization and preservation campaigns that were led by Kosatu. He contributed to um, the Department of Social Development paper on comprehensive social security and retirement reform. Um, he's also a board member of a couple of funds. Um, he represents Kosatu in NEDLEC. Um, without wasting time, I'd like to call upon Mr. Jan Masangu and hear what he has in store for us. Mr. Masangu, can you please um, take the virtual stage? Good morning, good morning, colleagues. <clears throat> Program Director Julia, you see as you called her, Astrid, fellow trustees, principal officers, and all other colleagues in the room. Thank you very much for inviting us. And more importantly, thank you for convening this during this very important month in the calendar of South Africa and um, Africa in particular. Particularly around the two sons which were born by this beautiful continent of ours, Steve Bantu, Bonke Bigo, and uh, Peter Tosh. I'm mentioning them because these are the one of the two sons who taught us and brought us to where we are today with this new South Africa we're talking about. Colleagues, I want to start by saying, Financial Sector Conduct Authority, while we appreciate your new trusted training toolkit, It must not, it, it mustn't be only new, but it must be simple and not complicated. To complicate the already complicated industry, whose intentions is basically to confuse trustees if one were to borrow from the discussions of the IRFA in Cape Town last week. And I think few speakers have raise that issue. At the center for us of this new trustee training toolkit must be the acceptance and the acknowledgement of the recognition of prior learning. We have trustees in the room, in the mines, in the construction sector, in municipalities, with a wealth of experience that wealth of experience must be tapped and the experience must be recognized. And I think for us, that's very critical so that we create a pool of trustees without creating an elitist group within the industry, because that is a concern to us and it will continue to be a, a concern to us. Um, this training should also not create a bureaucratic environment, but it must empower trustees. As Zarina have said that you need to train trustees so that they are able in law to carry out their visual duties, etc. And we appreciate that you have taken us through 
steps that need to be taken. But those steps should be such that a worker who's working tap in down deep in the mines, he's able to to join and and participate and be capacitated and be trained as a trustee in his own um, um, a right. Um, one of the things that we, as the this toolkit has been developed, is to avoid a situation where it's about us, for us, about us, without us. That obviously may create some confusions moving forward. And we're not raising that, that that is the case. But we are saying that for us is one of the fundamental principles of, 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 of um, empowering uh, trustees. And we appreciate that this is one of the steps forward in ensuring that we will have a pool of capacitated trustees who will be able to protect their industry, to protect their only savings, and to protect their deferred wages. Because in our view, these are deferred wages um, uh, of workers. And that at the level of policy formulation, policy development and engagements, those trustees will be there, in particular forums like NATLIC, that will be there to, to, to participate and it will not, you know, others participating um, um, on their behalf. And therefore, for us, that is very important because it, 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 it's going to empower uh, trustees. We are going to encourage all trustees in the trade union movement, outside the trade union movement, in particular, member trustees, without singling out anybody, because the law in terms of um, Section 7A1 is very clear, that trustees take this opportunity, embrace this program, be trained, so that you can demystify the industry. And as one colleague have said also last week, I think Thomas, I assume, is in the room, that you can tell your service providers that minimize this foreign weight that you are bringing into the industry with the sole purpose of actually uh, confusing us. Radesh said he thought that when in one of the board, they were talking about the ZCC. They were talking about this biggest old church in South Africa when they were talking about something else. So we are going to encourage them um, and we are encouraging them. But also we are going to make sure that not only they are assisted. You see, we need to take South African situation for what it is. What am I talking about? We're going to ensure working with FSCA that we have programs where we can put these trustees together so that they understand how to log in, what is expected of them to be able to, to undergo this training. So that this training is a simple training and it cannot, you know, lose legitimacy because you know, if you come with something that is like um, um, it holds in Gauteng, colleagues, you will know what I'm talking about. Then you'll come with something that is going to fail. But assume that having listened to Sancha when she was presenting this, it's a simple process and a simple program, but we think that we need to, 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 to assist trustees to make sure that they understand and they go through these processes. We want to say to the commissioner and the regulator, please regulate and not be regulated. We'll come back to that point later. Um, 
This trustees training, as we've indicated, that it should empower and capacitate trustees. However, it should not be weaponized against trustees. Remove them from what is rightfully theirs, but it should do the opposite. We are not suggesting DC that that is the case. We are raising concerns, legitimate concerns, of which previously we will raise, and we will not sit in this forum and net, not raise those. So that's why we, we, we are emphasizing that point. Adele, I'm not sure if it's my network or we just lost Mr. Masangu. He's also uh, silent on my side. I think it's network from his end. Oh, okay. I think you just froze. Um... Are you able to maybe Sancha, check on your site if you can get hold of him? Mr. Masangu, if you can hear us, you can disable your camera. Yeah, and if if possible, we can just use utilize a different platform to come. Yeah, yeah, I think he he was able to hear you. Um, um, um. Well, just in the meantime, while we're still waiting for Mr. Masango. Please, Adele, let me know. Um, once he's here, he was was raising important um points. Um, and I think maybe some of them will deal with them during the Q and A. Um, and we are almost close to the Q and A session. Um, there he is. We are getting Mr. Matlangu back. Mr. Matlangu. Sorry, colleagues. Um, yeah, I'm using another guy. That's so it's that time of the day when Eskom decide to do his own things. Apologies about that. I was talking about transformation that colleagues, um, particularly from FSCA, we don't want to hear you talking about transformation. We want to see you living, smelling, talking, and supporting transformation. Transformation within the context of the demographics of the people of this country. We should not sanitize that. I think it's one of the issues that we should raise without any you know fear or favor and i think we should not use um nice words like previously disadvantaged people it's black people who are excluded by law that's what transformation must talk to but it must talk to the language which is in the constitution of the republic of south africa so that people feel home they feel accepted they feel embraced within their own um, uh, country. In conclusion, I want to raise the following issues. That for us, we think there's a need, and it's long overdue, even before Section 7A is, is the Section 7A of the Act as we know it today, that we need a strong a strong, self-sufficient regulator and commission so that it can regulate properly. And that those of us who would normally oppose a self-sufficient regulator will not get our support. Because any entity that is not well-funded is not going to be a strong and independent and entity. And that therefore, a, a weak FSCA in our view, and I'm not suggesting DC, that we have a weak uh, DC, I mean FSCA. You could do better if you are resourced better in terms of the challenges we see in the industry. 
We think that a weak FSCA is obviously um, it, it, it cannot regulate properly. It cannot take us to task as trustees and service providers and actually is serve a particular um, um, uh, uh, interest. And it's an issue that we say outside the trustee training, we need to engage uh, around this issue. Because if we are opposed to levies, to FSCA, Surely it means our intention is actually to manipulate it and will not support that. Um, as we, we, we move towards this new trustee training toolkit, I've indicated that it should be new. Embrace the languages of the people of this country, including the 12th language, because that has been passed as, as, as a law, so that when workers appoint trustees, it should not be a, 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 an elite team, an exclusive club, and to serve a particular group. They must exercise their right to appoint a person because that person will be trained, will understand the industry. It should not be um, perpetuating the 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 past crea creation of excluding other citizens of this country. Second, last, the issue of the below ten billion rand unclaimed financial assets. It's an issue for the Congress of South African Trade Unions because those are um, income replacement for families who, as we are sitting here, they are not having or enjoying these benefits. We need to close that matter so that these monies can be paid to their rightful owners. We hope that this trustee training will assist trustees to ensure that the 7 billion rand unpaid contributions not only is paid to respective funds, but also those who are doing this are taken to, 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 to task. Because it is unfair that by law workers are expected to contribute, but at the tail end, when they're entrenched, when they pass on, their families can't get these benefits because um, some RAC employers have actually not contributed. FSCA, we need to talk about your deadline if it starts today. We're not sure what it means. Let's work together on your deadline so that the deadline, um, remembering that trustees are not full-time trustees. There are things that we need to, we need to put in place one of which is to ensure that employers play the ball, accept that they have trustees and these trustees need time to go through what they need to go through so that it's not weaponized to take them out of the system. And we, we, we think that those issues we need to discuss so that we support these trustees, in particular on the first issue we raised, which was recognition of proud learning. When we do that, we think that we can have a transform industry that will make everybody feel at home, feel acknowledged, feel accepted, in his own country and can allow and accept a nomination when he is appointed as a trustee, not um, create a pool of trustees who are trustees, um, who are elite basically at the expense of the right of workers to elect trustees um, of, 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 of their own. With that, we are saying we support the, the toolkit we are worried about the six months as the start, if the, 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 the talk have started ticking uh, um, as of today. We think that there's more work um, that we can do, but Zeta, 
um, independently so that we assist these trustees to go to, through this program and we make sure that it's implemented and it's implemented fully. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Masangu. Um, we, I mean, thank you so much. Um, uh, we, 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 we really are excited um, and as the authority and um, support, um, we welcome your support uh, for the TTK and the fact that you will encourage trustees to complete the TTK. Um, and um, we also note your concerns um, for um, the need for continuous learning, uh, training and support um, for, for some of the trustees. Um, and I hope some of the concerns that you've raised, even though they might not be addressed in this particular platform, like you said, um, in your uh, speech, um, they might be, you know, um, addressed later on. Uh, but maybe some will be addressed during our Q and A um, session. With that being said, thank you for your time um, and uh, for sharing your views, uh, strong views about, uh, you know, um, your take on the TTK. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the most exciting part of the launch um it's the q and a it's just um basically a segment to allow you as a trustee principal officer maybe you're from the administrator um to to you know to raise concerns to me comments um and just tell us your view on the phase one of the ttk um that we are launching today so we are excited to hear from you um but before we even allow hands um we can start with the uh, questions that were posed in the Q&A uh, ch chat box. And there was a question, uh, Sanshia, whether or not um, the recording will be made available. And if so, um, will it be on our YouTube channel? Will it be on the FSCA website? Or will it be distributed to the attendees who are who have RSVP'd? Sancha, we can't hear you. You're on mute, yes. Apologies. Thanks, Julia. Um, with regards to that question, will the recording be made av available? We will share the link as part of the launch pack, but you can also find all recordings on uh, the FSCA YouTube channel. Okay, thank you so much, um, Sansha. Um, there's a, a question, of, I guess this is directed to a person who has completed the trustee toolkit. How long uh, will it take an average person to complete the 11, first 11 modules. Um, I'm not sure if Sanchi, you want to take that time before I come in, or maybe Zarina. Sure, it depends. I think it should be about 30 minutes to an hour per module, but don't stress because I saw a question that asked if you know if your progress, I think it was Tony who asked if the progress um, will be saved so that you can go back. Yes, your progress will be saved. When you go back, there will be a pop-up that says, do you want to continue where you left off? This is very important because you are not able to do the summative assessment if you have not gone through the e-learning. So your progress is tracked and you can um, just pick up where you left off. Okay. Um, thank you, Sansha. Yeah, I think I agree with you. you can take an average of like an hour to actually complete one module um, so you can calculate. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, Tando? That's, 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 that's fine. I'm, I'm covered. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, Sancha, while you're still there, there's a question from... Um, I, I note your hand, Anesh. Uh, there's a question from Esme, and um, she's asking, would you send out the correct uh, link for the training? I think this was way before uh, we started. Um, um, if, it's, if she's referring to the TTK training that we did last year, 
we did it last year in September. Um, you can find those videos on the FACA YouTube channel. But what I will also do is I'll put the links in my presentation and then when we circulate the TTK launch pack, you can also find it in there. Okay. Uh, this one is addressed to Zarina. Maybe I can ask Zarina Sancha if you can also come in. Uh, from um, Deborah, I'm a new trustee and have not yet completed the old uh, trustee toolkit. Uh, the training should have been done by January 2024. Does this does this new TTK replace it? Sarina? I'm sorry, I lost you a bit. Uh, so, uh, so Deborah is saying she's a, a well, she, she's saying she's a new trustee and um she has not completed the old TTK. Um, but now she's saying that the trust, the, the training should have been completed by 2024. I'm not sure what that means. Um, does this new TTK obviously replace the old TTK? I yes, think she's indeed. asking if, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so indeed, um, indeed to, to respond to Debda. So now that this new TTK is being rolled out, um, you know, the, the, the old TTK is no longer relevant. So what Debra has to complete is the new TTK. Um, I don't know if you want me to uh, to respond to some of the other questions in the Q and A before we maybe go on to Anisha's question. I think one of the questions was, if you're not happy with your performance, can you retake it? And the short answer to this is indeed. Um, in fact, we encourage that. Um, maybe also to just touch on, um, you know, and. and Thank you, firstly, to, to the speakers from industry, from labor, organized labor, um, for their valuable inputs. Um, but just to state that, you know, we, the TTK or Trusty Toolkit training was designed in such a manner that it is um, accessible, easy, and particularly having members in mind. Um, so it's really been designed not to be exclusionary, to be inclusive. We're very cognizant of the transformation mandate to actually give content to it. Um, so, so yes, just on that, um, to participate in the TTK, will trustees need to meet a minimum educational standard? No, Barry, to answer your question, um, you know, as us, as we are very, as the FACA, we are very cognizant that in 1996 we had the democratization of of um, retirement funds, um, which allows for at least 50 percent uh, to be member elected. And we know that given the history of our country, not everyone has a certain level of education, as might be the case in in developed um, countries. So. So, so certainly there is no minimum educational standard and the way the trustee toolkit has been designed is so that, you know, um, attests to you to such an extent, there are, you know, uh, questions come up in different ways so that you can understand um, the concept. Um, uh, yeah, so, so that's to answer that. But Julia, over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zarina. Um, then we can go to um, the other questions that we have. I think Anesh is the first speaker. Um, Anesh, um, can I ask that the production team? Anesh is unmuted. Okay, thank Anesh you, does the mic. Yes, Anesh. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and thanks to the presenters and uh, for the release of the new trustee toolkit. Just a quick one in respect of uh, uh, the timelines. I've taken note that the six months uh, for the first 11 module starts running today. The, the question is, uh, in terms of uh, 7A3, uh, it, it requires uh, gazetting of uh, the prescribed standards um, is they going, has that been done firstly, or uh, does uh, placement of the notification on the FSCA's website uh, suffice? If if somebody could help me there, because you don't want a situation where you know uh, 
six months has run by and somebody then uses this as a defense to say, well, it wasn't actually, we weren't notified officially of this. Thanks, Zarina. Thank you, Anish, and thank you for that um, important question. So, Anish, as you may know, we, um, you know, we have conduct standard four of 2020 that has gone through the parliamentary process. So what is um, now required is merely, and if you look at, I think it's section four of that particular conduct standard, it requires that there's a notice placed on our website. So that's all that is required to ensure compliance. And that notice will be on, uh, ought to be on our website um, during the course of the day, Anish. So I don't foresee any challenges because, as I said, conduct, you know, it's not like we have the, I think, the normal gazetting set of regulations, et cetera. But we do have the conduct standard in place, which under which is basically the regulatory or legislative underpin for this uh, and coupled with a notice uh, to be published on the website, um, Anish, I hope that covers you. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Thank you so much, um, Anish. Thank you, Zarina. Um, we have Tabo Khotlazana. Am I able to put Tabo uh, All right, Tabo No, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I, my first question, the statement comes a bit confusing to me. Uh, it was saying that if you have completed the previous TTK, you don't have to complete the new one. But later on, one of the presenters said it is compulsory for everyone to complete the new TTK. So I, I would just like clarity on that one. First point. The second point is to say that most of us have completed the first TTK and uh, we have registered on your website where we still have those login details. But looking into this new process, before one could complete the modules, the registration process for me is just tedious. Is there a way that our login details from the previous module can be utilized in the new process instead of having to sit there, waste maybe time to, to, to complete this module. My next question is to say that, why are we excluding the principal officers from completing this? And reason for my question is, based on the earlier statement that uh, Mr. Masangu said, to say that FSCA should be the regulator and we should not see any other people or person imposing themselves as regulators. But immediately when we say principal officers must not uh, complete, uh, for me, I find it a bit discriminatory because the very same principal officers are giving advices to so many boards that they sit under. Even though they are not decision makers, but some board can follow the very same decisions that uh, or, or recommendations that are coming up with the principal officer. We are in the same industry, and for me, I think it will be fair if everyone in the industry complete the TTK B to a principal officer, an elected or appointed trustee. So it will just be fair that everyone completes that. My last question has to do with the module. I saw we were supposed to be shown a video that never came up. I'm not sure as to whether every module will have a video that will be mandatory to watch before you can complete on the module. And if the module, one module will take 30 minutes to an hour, that being inclusive of the video, you can just imagine if it's exclusive of the video, then one will have to spend three days in completing the 11 modules. It would be good if maybe a module was scheduled to take 15 to 20 minutes, because we also have other deliverables guys to, to do. If then I have to waste three days completing the module, really it will be taking just too much from, from the trustees. I understand the fact that you are saying 
you can break in between and the likes, but it can only be best that you get given maybe a, 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 a stipulated time to complete every module instead of having to break, because then if I have to break, I can complete one module or two modules today, two weeks, two modules and so forth. But if they would have been aligned not to take so much time of 30 minutes to an hour, it is just too much in my view. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tatsana. Good. Karina? Yeah, good, um, good morning, uh, Taboho. Um, yeah, look, I'll touch on a couple of things that, that you've, you've raised. So it's not accurate to say that if you've completed the old TTK, that you're not required to complete the, the new TTK. Because, in fact, if you look at Conduct Standard 4 of 2020 and you look at paragraph um, 3, um, I think it's uh, sub 7, you will see that any updates to the trusty toolkit, any new modules will have to be completed. Um, so, so to Boho, just so that you are clear on that, just because you've completed the old trusty toolkit doesn't mean you don't have to complete um, the new trusty toolkit. And that's in line with, you know, the continued learning that Mr. Mashlangu spoke about. And of course, it's also in line with, with Section 7A3, which says that the trustees must retain, um, you know, training and knowledge, et cetera, as prescribed by the FACA. So, so that's on, on that question. On your, um, on the video not working, um, the video indeed works. The reason it wasn't played, what we were referring to was actually a video that was done by our previous divisional executive who actually, you know, was on this journey with us for a very long time. So it's a video as I think a fair, his farewell to the industry from uh, none other than Mr. Olano Makubela, who has sadly um, rotated from our division um, to market, market integrity and decision sciences. Um, yeah, I, gosh, I can't, you, you've, you've raised quite a few things. You're saying that the modules might be too long. Look, um, um, Taboho, you know, we have tried to make this training, as I've said, as comprehensive as possible. It's there to assist trustees such as yourselves, um, you know, to, to have more comprehensive training. Because, of course, the, the previous training was much lighter. And, and that's why it's maybe not the 15 minutes that you want. But we're hoping that at the end of this process, and remember, you don't have to do this all in one sitting. You can take it over in a, a period as long as you meet your six-month deadline. So that shouldn't particularly be a problem. In terms of principal officers, remember that as the FECA, um, also doing the TTK, as the FECA, we can only do um, what the legislation allows us to do. We are a creature of statute. So if you look at Section 7A3, for example, which provides, um, gives us that ability to prescribe training, it's to boards of funds. So even though the principal officers are um, an integral part of funds, they don't form part, they are not a board member or a trustee. So they are distinct. And even though we strongly encourage um, Taboho principal officers to also, um, you know, take the, the, the TTK, we are not empowered to, um, at least in terms legislatively, um, at this point, to, to make the principal officers um, do it. So just to respond, um, you know, to, to respond to that aspect. I don't know if there's some ad other ad issues um, the TTK related that, I don't know, Sancha, you might want to touch on. Um, but um, Taboha, I hope that I've covered most of your questions. What I'll also ask um, Julia, maybe if we can, if there are more questions coming, Julia, um, I don't know if I see a hand or so, um, if we could just limit it to one or two to give everyone an opportunity, that would be appreciated. But thank you very much for the valuable questions, Taboko. The last one, Zaira, was as to whether every module has a video that we must watch before completing a module. Yes. No. Oh, sorry, Taboko. No, it doesn't have. Not every module has videos uh, that you need to watch. Oh, thank you. For completion. Thank you so much, uh, Zarina. Um, Adele, can you please uh, unmute uh, Clive?
Stark is unmuted. Hi, Julia. Hi, good morning. I'm actually as a trustee of the Transport Julia, Pension Fund. I can hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, sorry. Yes, um, we can I just hear need you to close. respond to, oh, to some yeah. of Dibuho's questions. If that's okay. Oh, you yeah. can go ahead, Sansha. I'm sorry, Clive, just a few seconds. Um, he asked if you can use your old logins from the old platform. You cannot. That is a completely different platform. You need to register on this new platform with new logins. And then um, the second thing which Zarina touched on was that principal office complete this. Please, for now, can it just be the trustees as we need accurate stats to monitor compliance and transformation? We will add a tab under not, under the funds, which is non applicable for your POs, and I see Natasha also asked service providers because we don't want them to fall part of our stats. We don't want them to click on a fund when they register. So we will add a not non not applicable um, um, option for them, and then they can also um, go through it. Thank you. Thank you, Sunshine Clive. Uh, good morning, everybody. Or good afternoon. It's just turn afternoon. My question is, some of the funds do not fall under the Pension Fund Act, such as the Transport Pension Fund, although we have done the old trustee toolkit. So is it, and I think that when they talk about the Pension Fund Act, and I talk under correction, that they talk about the funds that actually fall under the Act. So, um, do, uh, so that's not very clear because this is a question that's always come up. Do the trustees also have to do it? And and although we don't fall under it, it's important that the trustees keep up to date. So the Act doesn't actually talk about funds that do not fall under the Act. Why is that? Sarina? Julia, may I come in to respond to Clive? Yes, please. Yes. So, Clive, um, you've touched on an important point, um, but I'd like to, to answer this in a manner which is twofold. So the first is, of course, if you don't currently fall under the Act, there's no obligation for, for you as a trustee, if you're part of a government sector funded set, for example, there's no compulsion to do this trustee toolkit at the moment. However, um, you know, it's subject to this caveat. As we all know, we've got the Conduct of Financial Institutions Bill, which is um which which yeah, which is all which ought to be enacted, I think, um during the course or the latter course of this year, um, if not early next year. But I mean, I think the aim is to have it enacted this year. And then remember, all public sector funds will then be fall under the FSCA's remit which would then mean, Clive, from that date forward, six months from that date, you would have to complete the trustee training toolkit. So I hope that um, covers you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do it in any case because it, it brings you up to speed and, and it acknowledges power. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clive. Gabisa, Danny? Adele, can, Adele, can you please unmute uh, Marilyn, if possible? Also, wait for Gabisa. I'm just mindful of the time. <laughs> My apologies. Did you say Belinda? Becca. I am Marilyn. You can move to Belinda. Belinda's uh, mic allowed. Belinda. Yes, um, good afternoon now. Um, thank you very much for this. And um, I just got a quick question. I'm cognizant of the time. Um, so you're saying that principal officers right now cannot go 
and do the um the new trustee toolkit even if they wanted to um we've got to wait until you open it up then um for the new trust for the principal officers Sancha? Do you want me to take it or Sancha? Yes, please. Yes. OK, so fine. Belinda, thanks for that question. Now, as I indicated, principal officers may do it, but there'll be a separate tab for them as explained by Sancha, just for purposes so that you know that the the numbers don't get conflated, um, you know, for purposes, for reporting purposes, when we draw our reports uh, for monitoring and enforcement purposes. Sure, I understood that, but what I also understood from Sancha is that that tab is not there, and that tab is only going to be done much later on. Yeah. No, it's going to be done today. That. No, but okay, Belinda, today. sorry, okay. it's going to be done as later as in later today, not as Thank in later, <laughs> much later, sorry, as in later Thanks, today, Serena. Belinda. Thanks, Serena. You. Sorry, I also see Julia. Uh, there were other people whose hands were up. Actually, um, yes, whose we, questions Sabrina, weren't we taken. Did, oh. We did um, unmute them, but they're not. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with their mics. Um, Marilyn, can you ask your question, please? Adal, please confirm if Marilyn is un, un, unmuted. From my end, I see Trabiso and Soli. Hands. Okay, please can unmute Trabiso also. Okay, Kabisa, please. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good day, colleagues. I, I just want to, to check uh, this uh, toolkit. Is it a build up on the previous one or is it uh, a totally different one? And I, I missed, uh, I'm sorry for that because I didn't hear when is this going to start. Thank you. Hi, Solly. So um, it's a completely new trustee toolkit. Um, so, yeah, so it's completely new to answer that question. And I think you may have preempted when it's going live. It's the next item on the agenda. And I'll tell you exactly when that will go live. But I think, Julia, maybe just to wrap up, maybe take the remaining questions and we can answer it and then um, wrap up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zarina. Um, Adele, can I ask you to unmute Avi and Marilyn at the same time, if possible? They are unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Kavisa. It's Marilyn. Marilyn, yes. Yes, okay. Um, the question just is, that the last um, uh, toolkit allowed you to uh, do it over and over again and have a, a, a another certificate issued if you wanted to get higher marks or points. Does this do the same? Uh, Madeline, thanks for that. And I think that question was asked as well earlier. So, but it does allow you to do okay. that. And um, of course, we encourage it because the better you do, it means uh, chances are the better equipped you will be in, in exercising your fiduciary duties and your duties under the Act. Thank you for that question. Sorry for missing that one. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Gavisa? Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we're able to find Gavisa, but... Um, Gavisa, if you can, uh, please ask your question. Um, I'm very mindful of the time. Uh, Adele, can you confirm if she's still on me unmuted? She is unmuted. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've come to the end of the session. Um, I want to then give Zarina the platform while we're still waiting for Travisa to um on 2.9 Zarina. I'm not sure if you've touched on that announcing the TTK go live. Thank you. So I think Solly preempted us. So thank you for that, Solly. So the short answer is that TTK is has gone live. So as soon as you want to log in and if you super hyped and want to do it now it is live 
you may start uh, and commence on on your journey of completing the Justy Toolkit. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Zarina. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll come to we've come to the end of the session. I would like to thank our speakers. Um, starting with our DC, Deputy Commissioner Astrid Loden, um, Zarina, for the hard work that you've put in, and your team, Sansha, um, um, our external speakers, um, Radesh Maharaj, uh, Wayne Hila van Rensburg, uh, Geraldine Fola, um, and of course, Mr. Jan Matlangu. Um, thank you so much for taking time and sharing your insights with us and your um, you know, support for the TTK is, is really appreciated. Um, thank you so much to the organizing team that are in the background <laughs> for making sure that the launch becomes a success. Um, what would we be without you? And lastly, um, obviously, it's a launch because of the audience, um, the attendees. Thank you so much for your attendance. Um, we hope that the launch was informative and you're able to ask some of your concerns or questions. Um, and we hope that you will support and complete the TT. Thank you so, so much. Without wasting time, I think we've come to the end of the launch. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Dr. Matlangu.